Hello everyone. Today, our, the topic of our discussion is uh, phylogenetics, and uh, we have discussed a lot of different concepts related to genomics and comparative genomics, like how the genes are correlated, how we do sequence alignment, how we compare different families, or how we identify different conserved sites. So, all of these basic concepts are related to evolution in some way. So, uh, I do not think we have to go back into the, into the concepts of evolution and uh, argue why evolution is important. We, uh, here we will ju directly jump into the, uh, one of the biggest applications of evolution that is phylogenetics. And this phylogenetics is you can say the most widely used bioinformatics application. And why it is the most widely used by, uh, bioinformatics uh, application, why we have to care about the phylogenetics. It is uh, I think at present time today on 30th of April 2020, we all of us have already experienced a very dramatic change in the whole world by just the introduction of one basic change that actually ch changed the whole scenario that is COVID-19. Right? We all know about COVID-19. This is a coronavirus which was introduced uh, in Wuhan, China in back in December 2019 and this actually changed the whole world. Right? So, if there was no phylogenetics and if there were no concepts like uh, genetic uh, comparison or sequence alignment, how we would be able to understand the, uh, how, from where COVID-19 was emerged? what is the significance of COVID-19 and uh, what is the, what family it belongs to, right? Like, uh, for example, within a day or two after the, it was, it created the world widespread panic. Everybody was looking into the details that what is, what actually is the Corona, what actually is this virus and f what was the solution? They just go into the uh, phylogenetic analysis. They just did the genetic comparison. And after doing the comparison and the phylogenetic tree building, they came to know that this actually virus belongs to the already known strain of coronavirus that is SARS, which was introduced in 2002. And just uh, doing the sequence comparison, extra sequence extraction, uh, uh, alignment, and then building a phylogenetic tree, we were able to identify that this actually virus belongs to the family and this, this was done within few days. So, uh, we, can, uh, the, we can say that uh, phylogenetics not only talk about the evolutionary processes, but it has direct implications in the clinical uh, aspect of biology and also for the prevention of different diseases and for identification of new viral strains which can be deadly to the whole world, right? So, I think uh, previously in my classes I used to give example of MERS virus which was introduced in 2012 and they identified after uh, doing the sequence alignment and phylogenetic tree that uh, this MERS virus was actually clustering with the uh, uh, bat coronaviruses. So, they identified that this actually MERS virus was originated from the bat and it belongs to the corona family, right? So, now I think we do not have to go uh, again into that example because we have a very living example these days that is coronavirus 19. Next, what is important in phylogenetics is the first of all you have to understand the different terminologies that what actually is a uh, um, how actually we build a tree, right? So, first of all, uh, all of you should have an idea that how you can build a tree like for instance, this is one tree, here I can say that this is humans, right? These are chimpanzees, here I can say these are, okay, you can say mouse, after mouse, we can add other mammals like boss taurus. This is actually cow boss. We can say boss taurus, right? And uh, 
this is an outgroup of one you can uh, frog and then this uh, main output like this is the zebra fish right so this is actually a tree and there are different uh, this it looks like a very uh, simple tree but there are few things terminologies which you have to understand before uh, going into the details of the concepts of phylogenetics so first we should go and uh, we should know the d different these different terminologies okay so um, uh, so what all all these terminologies let's change the color so that it makes you understand easy it may, it will be easier for you to understand like there is the one important thing that is the here there is a node this actually is the point which is the uh, you can say the speciation or duplication or any specific change is known as node and node actually represent the taxonomic unit or you can say internal nodes which uh, correspond to the ancestral species that are not part of the data like so for example here this is the this is the uh, one internal node so you can say that this actually is the ancestral species of humans and chimpanzees right so you can say that which does not uh, belong to the data the uh, one important thing you can also read in the slides that it means that there is you can say there is no uh, specific species mentioned here but we uh, assume that uh, humans and chimpanzees were evolved from a common ancestor at this time point and this time point and this uh, node is known, known as the you can say node uh, the hypothetical ancestor of the two species right i think it's uh, so yeah next uh, the uh, important uh, terminology in this tree is uh, the internal branch for example here you can see there is an internal branch from here okay we can say this as a node and this region here this one is the internal branch so what actually is internal branch internal branch as you can see is the distance between the two nodes and internal nodes are connected by internal branches so actually you can simply say see that these two are connected the internal branches actually connect all the nodes in within a tree right and then there is a uh, from here you can see that okay where is the yeah here you can see that these are the internal uh, branch starting from here to here and then there is an external branch this is called external branch right so what is external branch external branch is between a node and the leaf i'll explain you what is the leaf uh, leaves are connected at uh, to the rest of the tree by external branches emanating from an internal node right so here you can see that the external branch uh, is between as it says that between node and the leaf leaf is actually this mouse here you can say mouse chimpanzees humans boss taurus frog zebra fish are different leaves you can say it a leaf you can say it a taxonomic unit you can say it as a operational taxonomic unit uh, which is actually uh, in simple words which appear on the tip of the phylogenetic tree so you can say these are operational taxonomic units or leaves leaf right okay and then uh, there is uh, one another important uh, uh, terminology which you guys should know that this this actually this uh, this whole length this actually is different for example here you can see it's a very long branch here you can see it's comparatively smaller 
it's compa this is comparatively longer if we just make it a bit long so this can be different between different uh, different uh, external branches the length can vary and this length is actually known as this actually uh, thing is known as uh, horizontal branch uh, length sorry for the dirty presentation i am not very good at you all know that my writing is not that excellent but i hope it's all the things are very clear to you so what is horizontal branch length horizontal branch length is actually the length that represents the number of changes that have occurred in that branch so if there is uh, you can say there are a lot of changes for example if we are comparing between uh, comparing uh, frog and zebra fish in this ppt uh, in this uh, in diagram you can see that the length of the zebra fish branch length is more compared to the length of frog so here it means that the number of amino acid changes or nucleotide changes or mutations are more in zebra fish compared to frog so the, the length can get longer if the number of changes increases right so that directly corresponds to the total number of changes and here whenever you build a tree there would be a, a point that is will be written here like 0 0.02 or 0 0.05 depending on the the rate substitution rate and the algorithm we have selected right so that can be uh, this is actually the in all the trees this number will explain that the substitution or rate or change right substitution rate you can say that can be of nucleotides or amino acids or anything we have here right so i think uh, this uh, part is uh, of for uh, very clear that all the terminologies these terminologies are uh, frequently used so uh, we all ha should have a very uh, interest uh, clear idea about these terminologies you guys should go through all the presentation and if there will be any question we will uh, discuss that in the discussion section so this is uh, probably very clear so now we just move to the next uh, definition so i think i should add another section here that will make it more simpler right so now there is one more uh, uh, terminology which is very frequently used I think we should go back and select the black color. I like the black one more. Where is the black color? Yeah, here it is. Right. So there is uh, one more terminology that is uh, widely used in um, uh, phylogenetics. That is rooted and unrooted tree. Right. So what is the difference between a rooted and unrooted tree? So I think the, the name is very, uh, very clear that in a rooted tree, there exists a particular node called the root from which a unique path leads to any other node. The direction of each path correspond to the evolutionary time and the root is the common ancestor of all the OTUs or the leaves under study. Right. So here you can say that there in a, in a phylogenetic tree, there is, there is there will be a root from where all the branches and all the nodes will originate for example if i make it make a root here so here you can see that if this is a tree now here there is like okay right. now this is actually the root this is the root and here there are different species like a b c d e now here the the rooted tree actually uh, gives you a root simple you can say that there is a last common ancestor or the most distantly related ancestor uh, species organism any population whatever you are going to study there would be a root to that uh, if if we 
if we want to make a root then there are different types of algorithms which build the rooted trees and uh, yes so but there is another type of uh, first first of all uh, just make it more clear that this root uh, according to the definition which i shared you during in the presentation this this root can lead to the any any other node like if we go from here then it could reach to a from here if we go there it can reach to b here again we go it can reach to c so it can lead to all the otus so it is related to all the otus that's why it is the most common ancestor so that's why if we want to know the ancestral relationships we build rooted trees but there is another type of tree that is called the uh unrooted tree and in in the unrooted tree obviously it means there is a there is no root and that root uh it is just telling us the unrooted tree is just telling us the relationships not the evolutionary path for example if we build a rooted tree here we can say it's a cd right okay sorry now here's a b that's no oh, sorry e right now you can see that there is no there are there are internal nodes there are external branches there are otus but there is no uh, un, uh, ancestor right so it is just telling us the relationship that here you can see that uh, there is a close relationship between a and b they are based on the sequence alignment or comparison or whatever they are studying there is a uh, uh, close relationship between a and b there is a close relationship between c and d and you can say that there is a uh, c and d are more closely related to e compared to a and b and a and b are more is more closely related to e because there is a lesser distance there is a lesser branch length and um, it's more uh, it's more for just to find the you can say the uh, relationships not any evolutionary path right and yes um, uh, all the trees actually when when we are talking about the when we are talking about uh, the rooted and unrooted tree obviously the phylogenetic tree itself doesn't know that how to build a root how to identify first of all when we give let's suppose uh, i'm just giving you an example that if we are taking 10 different species and 10 different sequences and uh, we just did a sequence alignment and how the uh, how the phylogenetic algorithm can know that which is the root based on just a distant relationship there can be any more uh, variation in the sequences so how to identify the exact root so actually phylogenetic tree a phylogenetic algorithm doesn't know that so for to root to build a root we need an out group and we have to know first from any external information from any paleontological evidence, uh, evidence or some from a tree of life that this uh, out of all these 10 different species which we are comparing the most distantly related species is this one right for example if we are comparing human mouse rat dog and drosophila so we already know that the most distantly related species out of all the tree, uh, this species is drosophila so we have to uh, build a root at the at at drosophila for example here if you can see if i just uh, make it uh, use a razor here where is the razor right if i made draw here here let's go back okay oh no 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 can i have to build it again okay So now I am trying to I am telling you how to uh, build a unrooted tree. How to build a rooted tree out of an unrooted tree? For example, here it was again. Uh, let's suppose this was A, B, C, right? 
here this is for example we say this is human right and uh, this is dog this is cat this is frog or any other uh, frog or you can say not frog mouse let's suppose right and this is fish now from this tree we know that the most uh, distantly related uh, species out of these five human dog cat mouse is is which one you all know that which one that is drosophila so uh, th that is fish here the fish is mentioned so we have to insert a root at drosophila how to insert a root at drosophila it's very simple we just go and we just uh, insert for instance here at this time point we just the phylogenetic tree insert a root here and it assumes that uh, tree uh, the phylogenetic uh, tree has the root in this branch so he j it just built another tree like it will make a if we erase all the all the unnecessary information here to make the tree easier for you okay just just rub this all right now we're just talking about uh, making a now here we're just talking about what we are talking about rooting and unrooted tree right so here we're just talking about this so now we want to uh, based on the uh, paleontological information and already known external information we inserted a, a root here and now we will just uh, for example after inserting a root we can now say that if we just make a tree here that now dog and uh, you can say dog and hum humans are like dog and humans are like this and then there is a association of uh, we can say cat and mouse then there is here uh, we just exclude uh, had a I can say a root which was inserted at this time point so we can say that this is the root so based on the first of all all the trees what actually why you want to explain it here to you here is that first the tree actually builds uh, the tree based on the sequence alignment and similarities and after building the similarity there are some trees which insert a root inside the tree by identifying the out group the out group is actually the most distantly related uh, species in the whole taxa under study so uh, i i forgot to explain this uh, terminology out group uh, in the terminology so I think now it's clear that first uh, there is one type of trees that are the rooted trees then there is an unrooted tree and if we have an unrooted tree and we want to make a rooted tree out of the unrooted tree we just insert the root based on the paleontological and uh, external information and uh, to explain the uh, to make a rooted tree right I think uh, it's very uh, uh, it's very clear now and uh, I will share the slides with you um, which will cover all these uh, topics in detail so you can uh, compare the both uh, the slides and the lecture together so here uh, based the starting from the slide 1 to slide 12 in the in the uh, PowerPoint, 
I have explained different uh, terminologies. You just go through this lecture and open all the slides in front of you. And even if you don't want to uh, open the slides, I think this presentation is very self-explanatory. I hope um, you all will uh, watch this lecture and listen to each point in detail and compare it with PowerPoint presentation. And we will discuss uh, all these things uh, in detail in our next class. Thank you very much. Hope everybody is fine and safe at their home. Take care of yourself. Don't go out because of the corona pandemic. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.